No, you are not following Jesus. I get so sick and tired of hearing people saying, I just believe in following Jesus. We just want to be more like Jesus and be more like the Lord. And I just follow Jesus. And yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And I've dealt with that for many, many years. Um, being raised in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, I was uh, raised around Mennonites and Amish and, and, you know, brethren, conservative brethren and, and you know, Martinites and, and I'm all of them. And they all do the same thing. And now the newest, the newest one before I left there was uh, Charity Ministries. Denny Keniston was the, one of the founders of the thing. He was a Hiles Anderson graduate and uh, just a wicked, wicked devil. Uh, he died and went to hell, praise the Lord. Uh, just a, oh my word, the guy. I did a, I did a thing refuting his uh, thing on pacifism. His, he did this sermon on pacifism and he talked about God's kingdom being now. And the sermon on the Mount is for us today and, and all this other stuff. And he's radical Christianity and all this. Yeah, I'm very familiar with that whole movement. And I've talked with Amish over the years, many Amish and, and things, and um, it's the same thing. Self-righteousness. Uh, these people, they'll say, we're following Jesus. Uh, they don't talk much about Paul, and they won't go to the Pauline epistles very much. And I'm going to show you the reason why. Um, but let's just stick with this thing. They're following Jesus. We're following Jesus. Ah, I just want to follow Jesus, and I just want to not judge anybody and whatever else, because the Bible says judge not. <laughs> you know, Matthew chapter 7 They'll go to Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7, which Jesus Christ is there and he's giving the rules for the millennial kingdom uh, when he's ruling and reigning physically on the earth. You say, how do you know that? Go to Matthew chapter 5. I'll show you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 35 Nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Jesus is preaching the kingdom of heaven all throughout the book of Matthew, the only book in the entire Bible where the word kingdom, phrase kingdom of heaven appears. Kingdom of heaven is the physical kingdom. Okay? It is a physical millennial kingdom with the king, Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Not his church. Jesus is ruling through his church. Nonsense. Okay? I mean, look at, the, look at the Christian church down here. They're fighting all the time and division and strife and on contention and all kinds of stuff. And they're going to rule for a thousand years? I don't think so. Jesus Christ is going to physically rule on the earth for 1,000 years. If you believe anything else, you've been deceived. Okay? Your beliefs are satanic if you believe in anything else. Premillennialism is the only conclusion you can come to if you believe the King James Bible. Revelation chapter 20, Jesus Christ comes down. You know, comes down in chapter 19, destroys the Antichrist and the false prophet and then their army. And then he goes into Jerusalem. He comes down to the earth in Revelation chapter 20. doesn't say he went, came down and then went back up and said, oh, well, the church is here? Good. You know, no. He's here. He rules for a thousand years. But to take Matthew chapter 5 and say, well, it's good for today. We can do it today. Then what you are saying is you can have the millennial kingdom without the king. Jerusalem is not the city of the great king right now. You say, well, I'm an amillennial believer. Then you're satanic. So well, it, are, are, are you open to discuss this? No, I'm not. Because I'm right and you're wrong. You say, well, I'm postmillennial. Then you're satanic. Because you're saying that Jesus Christ has to come back at the end of the millennial kingdom. Amillennial is there is no kingdom. We're just kind of sort of in it, kind of sort of, you know, whatever. Uh, Satan's bound in the, in, in the bottomless pit for a thousand years? How's that work out? Well, that's just symbolic. Uh -huh, sure it is, you papist. <laughs> Disgusting papist. Uh, amillennialism, amillennialism is nonsense, but uh, postmillennial is just as stupid in many ways because you get this whole thing of, well, the church is going to rule for a thousand years. And then Jesus Christ comes back at the end of it and says, wow, you really did a good job there. You know, a thousand years. <laughs> Yeah, right. You're going to get Christians to, to get along for a thousand years? I don't think so. Uh, it's going to be Jesus Christ ruling and reigning for the thousand year period. But like I said, you get these people today and they say, we follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. <laughs> they usually have a little bit of a lisp to them or whatever. Effeminate men and whatnot. And we're pacif We're pacifists because we follow Jesus. We follow Christ and the teachings of Christ. <laughs> you know, uh, okay, let's... But let's just go with that for a minute, okay? They're, they're followers of Jesus. Let's stick, stick with that. We follow Matthew chapter 5, and it says here, you know, uh, give you a good one. Um, 
Verse 22, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Well, you know, maybe they won't talk about hellfire, but they'll say, We shouldn't be angry with our brother without a cause. You know, let's just be nice and, and things. You know, um, give to him, verse 42, Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow thee, turn, thou, turn not thou away. Let's be giving. Let's practice radical Christianity. <laughs> I'm so familiar with this stuff. It's disgusting. But, you know, they'll, they'll go through this and you get this kind of communitarian, kind of a pacifistic, uh, just, you know, I'm willing to die. I'm willing to be martyred and things and, you know, and, and all this stuff. And uh, if you get martyred, it should be because you're fighting for Jesus Christ, uh, not because you've laid down and, and just let the enemy walk all over you. You know, but but here's the, here's the whole thing. Again, like I said, let's just let's just go with this Sermon on the Mount, and you're following Jesus and all that stuff. Okay, how about uh, Matthew chapter twenty-three? Matthew chapter twenty-three, verse fourteen. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Oh, is, is that the Jesus that you follow? I've never seen an Amish member of the Amish system or a Mennonite or whatever else, walk up to a Catholic priest and say, Woe unto you, hypocrite! Oh, that, that part of Jesus they don't want to follow. We'll just follow Matthew chapter 5 through 7 and we'll just kind of ignore the parts where Jesus is militant and he's getting the people so angry that they're trying to pick up rocks and stone him. We'll ignore those parts. And we'll ignore the fact that Jesus Christ was basically framed by the religious leaders of his day and taken in, they brought up false accusations against him and then he's crucified. And they'll say, well, we should take up our cross too and think like this. Uh, okay, if you die on the cross, they're a monastic perverts. Um, if you die on the cross, your blood isn't going to mean anything. So well, I'll, I'll follow Jesus to the cross. Okay, and you die and it will mean nothing at all. I mean, this, this whole following Jesus thing is just, you look at it and it's, and it's, oh, it sounds so nice. You know, we're red letter Christians. We only follow the teachings of Jesus. <laughs> uh, they don't for one second. Jesus Christ was very, very militant. Jesus Christ was very sarcastic. I mean, why would he call religious leaders of his day whited sepulchers? You know, I mean, what a thing to say. And they were offended many, many times at what Jesus was saying. Well, they'll just ignore that part. Yeah. But let's look about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. What does the Bible say about following someone? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Um, you mean to tell me that we're supposed to follow Paul? Yeah. The instructions for us today as Christians are in the Pauline epistles. And you say, well, then you're a hyper-dispensation. I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. Okay. A uh, hyper-dispensationalist, they'll cut, I mean, you get some flavors of hyper-dispensationalism. They will actually cut out parts of Paul's epistles. Romans chapter 9 through 11, I think it is, or whatever, they'll say that's for the Jews. Completely for the Jews. There's nothing in there for Christians. Then why, why does Paul say it's the, it's the gospel that we preach? You know, it's crazy. But uh, hyper dispensationalists will say, well, um, Peter and J James and John and things, they were the one the church that went to the Jews. And Paul, you know, he's the church of the Gentiles, and that's what we are today, and the church of the one body and, and things like this, and uh, nuttier than a pecan pie. Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 6. That were, if any man consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is proud knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. And it goes on. We're supposed to consent to the words of Jesus Christ. I don't reject what Jesus Christ said. I look and I say, okay, what was, who was Jesus Christ speaking to? 
What was he trying to say? What's the Sermon on the Mount all about? But Paul is the one that instructions were given to for the New Testament church. And you can get these people claim, we follow Jesus and we don't follow Paul. And yet they don't even follow Jesus. They're liars. They're deceivers. My notes blow away here in the wind. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'll show you two other places where Paul openly says to follow him. And Paul was given those instructions by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the way. Paul didn't just come up with this stuff on his own and, hey, I'm just going to get a, my own little following here. No. Paul was told to do those things by Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. We are fools for Paul's sake. doesn't say that. For Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Uh-oh. Maybe there's a little bit of a reason to uh, stick to the teachings of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. You can get along much better with people. You won't be uh, fulfilling these verses here. Made a fool for Christ's sake. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Oh, who's this, this idiot, you know, Denlinger? Look at him out there in the woods, you know. Doesn't even have a church building. And, oh, you know, he's not educated and he's this and he's that. Uh-huh, yep. A fool for Christ's sake. People make fun of me. Why? Because I'm following what Paul said I'm supposed to follow. I'm a follower of Paul and therefore of Jesus Christ. And I don't mean Paul is Jesus Christ, okay? Following Paul because Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. We'll continue here. I'll show you how it all ties together. Verse 15. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be followers of me. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Yeah. Paul's ways were those that Jesus Christ told him to preach and teach and things like that. And that's the way it is for a Bible-believing Christian today. We aren't rejecting Jesus. We're doing what Jesus Christ told us to do through the Apostle Paul. And you know, lost people go, Well, this is heresy. Well, you're lost. That's why you don't understand. Turn next to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Beginning in verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Yeah. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You say, well, I'm going to follow Jesus. Okay, here's how you follow him. You ready? That I may know him, Jesus Christ, in other words, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Was Jesus Christ called a fool? Was Jesus Christ uh, mocked and put down? Very much so. Well, then you got to go and you got to act like Jesus and things and imitate Jesus and whatever else uh, to get that same kind of mockery. No, just preach Christ crucified. Just preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ, that a man must be born again. You need to come to the end of your self-righteousness. You say, how do I do that? Oh, by believing on a homeless Jewish carpenter who died naked on a cross. Huh? That's what Jesus Christ did. Do you believe it? 
Can you come to the end of yourself? Can you say Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief? Can you say that? Well, that sounds awfully foolish. Yeah, I know. That's how it works. And uh, what happens? Well, as you get older and older as a Christian, all of a sudden you're going to start seeing the things that happened to Jesus Christ are going to start to happen to you. And you get mocked and put down and everything else. Yeah, absolutely. Verse 11, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example. There are great men of the faith that followed Jesus Christ, and they pe preached out of the Pauline epistles. And they suffered. Paul suffered very many of the same persecutions that Jesus Christ did. And you will too as a Christian. That's how you get to know Jesus Christ. Say, I'm following Jesus. So you can pretend that you're following Jesus by uh, looking at certain portions of the Gospels and ignoring others. Or you can follow Jesus Christ by doing what Paul said to do, ordained of the Lord, saying, you know, Lord coming to Paul and saying, preach this, tell him to do these things. And you do those things, and all of a sudden you're starting to get some real fellowship with the Lord. And you get to see people stabbing you in the back. And you get to be laughed at and mocked. And you get to have people making up all kinds of false accusations against you. You go through some sleepless nights. And you go and you have victory and you, and you have horrible times of people just turning on you and whatever else. Yeah. The fellowship of his sufferings. Verse 18. For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. A lot of people who profess to be Christians and they're not. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. I've been preaching against this stuff for years and years and years, false professions of faith. People that profess to be saved, but in works they deny Jesus Christ. In works they just live like the world, they look like the world, they act like the world. Verse 20, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. I would run away from people that try to say that they follow Jesus and don't talk about Paul and don't quote from the Pauline epistles. You're dealing with very lost people. And uh, interestingly, uh, there's a man coming in the future called the Antichrist. And uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Uh, there's a lot of the beast in Revelation chapter 13. And this man is a counterfeit Christ. And you study the nature of Satan in the Bible. He counterfeits the Lord all the time. Uh, and you get people that say, I'm going to live like Jesus lived. And follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And I want to be just like Jesus Hmm, that's rather interesting. You could almost call them uh, anti-Christs. And that's precisely what they are. And they'll come out with all kinds of things and, and they'll, they'll go against the, the damnable doctrine of once saved, always saved, you know, and things. And, and I, I had a big go around with an Amish guy here in northern Maine and, and uh, he was going off about the thing of the damnable doctrine of once saved, always saved. And eternal security is a damnable doctrine and, and all this stuff. The guy was the most self-righteous, just wicked individual. Oh, but he had lots of outward standards. And he was following Jesus. And he believed the kingdom is right now. We're building a kingdom. Watch out for these people. 
Okay? So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.